In this tutorial, we will be introducing stoichiometry. The numerical relationship between the quantities in the balanced chemical equation is called stoichiometry. We can predict how many products there are by basing on how many reactants we start with. We can also figure out how many reactants we need to, to create how much products we want. We can relate the reactants to one another. This is all done in the same chemical equation. That means that all the compounds in that chemical equation are related to one another. It's very similar to a recipe. Let's say you're trying to make pancakes. We need one cup of flour, two eggs, and a half teaspoon of baking powder to make five pancakes. That's very similar to a chemical equation saying that we need three moles of NaCl to react with two moles of H3PO4 or something like that. So the, re the recipe shows a numerical relationship between the pancake ingredients and what we come out with, the reactants and the products. If we have two eggs and enough of everything else, we can make five pancakes. We call we can write this as a relationship, 2 to 5. But what if we have 8 eggs? Then we can make even more pancakes, assuming that we have enough of everything else. So this is just how a chemical equation is written. The chemical equation is the recipe for how we're going to make these products. So let's look at this. We have H2 and N2 yielding NH3. We need three H2s and one N2 to make two NH3s. So for every three molecules of H2 and one molecule of N2 that react, we can produce two moles of NH3. Now remember Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules per mole. That's relating these molecules over to the moles. So if we assume that we multiply all of these by Avogadro's number, three moles of H2 is, with one mole of N2 can yield two moles of NH3. Moles are very, very important in stoichiometry. Everything that relates each other has to go through moles first. That's super important that you realize from the start. So if you're given a different unit, you need to convert it to moles before you can continue. All right, but for this particular video, we're going to focus just on moles. I like to write things out. So if we have three moles of N2, how, in more than enough H2, how many moles of NH3 can we produce? Notice we're going from one compound to another compound. In order to do that, you have to look at the relationships. We have to look at the coefficients. The reason for that is because of for every one mole of N2 that we use, we can make two moles of NH3. Whenever you have a horizontal line like that, you automatically use the coefficients, and that is the only time you use the coefficients. Moles should be the end cap of every horizontal line. Because in order to go from one thing to another, you have to go through moles 100% of the time. Here, we're starting off with three moles, so we're already in moles, so we don't have to convert that. The question is asking about moles, so we don't have to convert that either. So we're just going to stick with moles right now. Take the number you're trying to convert and put it over 1. 3 moles. Now it's important to start remembering to put in your compound if you haven't already done so. 3 moles of N2 over 1 because all we did was change it into a fraction. We didn't actually change the number by doing that. Moles of N2 are on the top. That means I want moles of N2 on the bottom of the next one. We're right here. We're trying to get to the here. Remember, where you're coming from is on the bottom, where you're going to will be on the top. So where we're coming from is one mole of N2. Where we're going to 
is 2 moles of an H3. So here we have 3 times 2 divided by 1. Remember, in the very top of the very last bracket, you will have what you're looking for. The question says how many moles of NH3. The top of the last bracket says moles of NH3. Let's do another one. How many moles of H2O, so I'm going to put that underneath what I need, are produced when 5.00 moles of oxygen re react? So we're going from moles of one to moles of another, which means we're going to use coefficients. And the moles are on the end caps. Take a look at the chemical equation real fast. Remember, when we're talking about stoichiometry, you always have to make sure you have a balanced chemical equation. Is this question, is this equation balanced? The answer is no. The H's are balanced, but the oxygens are not. So if I put a 2 here, that changed the hydrogens, so I need to put another 2 here. Now we have a balanced equation. We're going from moles to moles. We're starting with moles, and we're ending in moles. So that means I don't need to figure out any other numbers. I can just use the coefficients. So I'll put the number I'm trying to convert over 1, 5.00 moles of O2 over 1. Moles of O2 are on the top, that means I want to put that on the bottom. That's where we're going from. The coefficient is a 1, and where we're going to is H2O. And that coefficient is 2. So 5 times 2 divided by 1 is 10.0 moles of H2O. I stop it at 10.0 because I have three significant figures in the question, so I want to make sure to have three in the answer. All right, the last example we're going to give, 12 moles of NaClO3 will produce how many moles of O2? Once again, we're changing compounds here. Let's draw a horizontal line from one to the next. Moles are the end caps of the horizontal line always. All right, make sure your chemical equation is balanced. This one is not. Notice that the, the oxygens are off. I have three on the left and two on the right. I'm going to make it so both, I have six on both sides. That changed sodium chloride, so I need to balance that one out too. All right, now I have a balanced chemical equation. I know where I'm going from, and I know where I'm going to. So that means that I need to start putting the number over 1. So 12.00 moles NaClO3 over 1. Where we're going from is the NaClO3. Where we're going to is the O2. So that calculates out to be 12 times 3 divided by 2, which equals 18. And that's an overview on how we use chemical equations in stoichiometry.